At the beginning of a respect contract, let's break it down. We want to confirm the time commitments for people. We want to show people that you're conscious of their time. And we also want to be conscious of our own time. We also want to be able to set ourselves up to go deeper because we know that unless you're in a transactional environment, it's rarely a one call close. Now, you want to define the goals of a call. And in the context of today's lesson, I'm talking about a first meeting, your first meeting after they've said yes in an email or your SDR has set it up, right? The goal of our call, right? Why are we talking? Okay. And we're going to talk about what that goal is in a minute. We're going to have an agenda for the call, right? No more than two or three things. If you've got a laundry list of five things you've got to cover in a first meeting, then something's going on, right? It's, it's, way, too, it's way too granular too early, in my opinion. We haven't earned the right to go that deep right? Always ask them if they have something that they want to add as well. And then we're going to talk about the potential results. What does this call look like, right? What's going to happen at the end of this call, right? Everybody loves to say that the goal of the first call is to get a second call. That's not really the goal. You actually have to make them want to have a second call. You've got to focus in on that emotional and the feeling that they need to have another conversation before you focus on the outcome, which is the second meeting. And finally, we're going to create a mini contract that says, here's what we're going to agree to in all of our communications. This is going to level set our playing field. This is going to make sure that we understand that we are equals in this part of the conversation. And then we will have a transition statement. So let's break it down into very smaller parts, right? And these are parts of a script. This is the stuff you're going to want to start taking pictures of, right? These are probably about 80% of what I actually say. I change it a little bit. Here we go when I get started. But it goes something like this. You know, hey, Sarah, before we get started um, in introductions, you know, I'd like to do a little housekeeping first. You know, I've got us down for 30 minutes. Does that still work for you? Sarah responds, yes. And I will go, great. Do you have any hard stops I need to be aware of? And Regardless of what Sarah says with hard stops, I come back and say, hey, that's fantastic. You know what I'm going to do at the five minute mark? I'm going to call a quick timeout so we can take, step, take stock of where we are and determine next steps. So here I am within the first 30 seconds of a conversation and I'm doing a couple of things. I'm establishing a time commitment for both of us. I'm showing them their time matters, right? I'm also telling them within 30 seconds that I'm actually going to ask them for another call that we're going to decide together whether there's going to be another call. And then here's the critical piece. By stating I'm going to take that five minutes at the end for the timeout, it helps remind me to make sure to do that. Because so often we get to the end of the first call and we've run out of time. And then we're scrambling as fast as we can, as hard as we can to go, oh, well, you know, do you want to talk next Tuesday? Oh, oh okay, well, you know what, I'll just email you on uh, Tuesday to see if we can get another meeting next week. I hate those conversations. They're so frustrating. We actually can control that. So by putting this in the beginning of the respect contract, I find this to be very, very helpful. Obviously the pitch, right? Hey, the reason for our call, right? The goals of this call are very simple. I just wanna get a mutual frame of reference, right? I wanna learn about you and I want you to learn about me. That is the only goal of a first call. It's not to get a second call. That comes later, I promise you, right? So to do this, I think we're both gonna have some questions. Great, you know, I hope it's okay if I ask you. I promise it won't be a job interview or an inquisition. And by all means, you can ask me questions too. So here I am, I've established time. I've established a reason for the call. I've given a little bit of an agenda that we're gonna ask each other questions. And now I've earned the right to ask questions because nobody's gonna say no. Nobody's ever gonna say, no, you can't ask me any questions. And by all means, if you find the one person out of a thousand that does, then I would tell you to decide whether or not you should even be talking to them in the first place. And now we're getting a little bit of a commitment from them. How's that sound to you? Here's the agenda. I want to understand what challenges you're having with this. I want to answer any questions you have about us, and I just want to determine next steps. That is the only agenda that you need really in a first conversation. It should stay fairly high level for now. You'll get into the granular. The conversation will lead you down the granular path. But until then, keep it high level, keep it simple, make it easy for them. I'll ask them if there's something they wanna, they wanna add. Then we're gonna talk about the results, right? Hey, look, at some point, Sarah, I know that you are looking to evaluate me as a sales trainer. That's totally fine. I suspect you'll probably talk to some other people too, right? I hope that we can come together make a decision that's going to be right for you. So we're going to talk about that for, 
out loud. We may decide at the end of this conversation, Sarah, to have another conversation, or we may decide not to. And I say that out loud. People get really nervous about saying that. People are like, well, I've been coached not to tell give people an out. Well, in all honesty, you want them to have an out. But how you position that out is different than not giving them an out altogether. And that's the piece you really want to focus on. So make sure that you understand how you're doing it and what you're doing and the way you're going to say it so that you actually still maintain control. Because guess what? You want to get out too. If they're not worth your time, the last thing you really, really want to be doing is chasing maybes. There's nothing that will exhaust your spirit and will as a salesperson than chasing maybes, right? So then comes the mini contract. And I will say something like this, like, hey, Sarah, look, I appreciate that, that, you know, you're going to let me know. I'll let you know, because the last thing I really want to do is chase you in with chase you down with checking in, following up and touching base emails that I know you hate getting and I hate sending because everybody does it, right? In the immortal words of my friend, John Barrows, please, for the love of God, stop checking in, reaching out, touching base, circling back, bubbling to the top, whatever it is, stop saying those things. Those things do not help you. You sound like everybody else, and that's why they discount us as professionals. I say something like this, hey, I don't do, mobi do maybes, so can we both agree if either of us get to a point where this conversation feels like it's not the right fit, we'll just say so and walk away friends. Again, nobody's gonna say no to that. And what's more important is people are gonna be refreshed by how direct and honest you are. They're happy to be led down your path. They want you to lead them through this process. Otherwise, you get stuck going down their process and they start to get frustrated. They're frustrated because you haven't taken the time to lead them. They don't want to have to think about what to do next. They want you to lead them down this path. So that is the, the main pieces of the respect contract. But you're not done. There's something else you got to do. You've got to shift from this, hey, here's our mini agreement at the beginning of the conversation to a transition statement. How do you want to start this conversation? And I want to make sure that everybody understands open-ended versus closed-ended questions, which we're going to cover in a bit. Open-ended questions all start you know, with things like what. Asking someone what made you want to have this call today is very different than, well, why did you want to talk to us? Why can put people on the defensive if you're not careful, right? That is a really important thing. What does a thing called labeling means it creates some label and creates a tangible reference to something that's an intangible object or uh, an intangible reason. Oh, we had a data breach. That's why we wanted to talk. Or, oh, we need to get our security in line because we're afraid of um, an audit coming up. It's a whole lot easier for people to say, what made you want to have this call versus why did you want to talk to me? So here's what it looks like in an entire respect contract. And here's kind of what it sounds like. Hey, thanks for making the time today. I've got us down for 30 minutes. Does that still work? Hey, that's great. Hey, before we jump on the jump into things, I'd love to put some parameters around our discussion and any potential future discussions. Just so you know, my only goal of the call today is to establish a mutual frame of reference for each other. I'd like to learn about your business and ask you some questions. And of course, I'm happy to share anything with you and answer any of your questions. Now, I say this to everyone, you know, if at any point, Sarah, you feel like um, that we're not the right fit, please feel free to let me know. And likewise, if I discover something about your business that doesn't match what we offer, I'll gladly tell you. Is that fair? Of course, Sarah's going to say yes. Great. The last thing I want to do is bug you with checking in, reaching out, and touching base calls that you hate getting and I hate making. Here comes the transition. I gave you two options. One of them, so Sarah, if you don't mind me asking, what made you want to speak today? That's a very simple one. Here's a different one that I also have come up with. Hey, normally this is the part where people share with me what they're looking for from a solution that they can't do today. Or I can tell you about us, but that may not work well since I'm not sure what you're seeking. Would you mind going first? This gives the prospect the ability to go forward and make a decision and have a certain level of control. I tend to do option one more than I ever do option two anymore because I felt like if ever I had to go first, I just kind of had diarrhea of the mouth and I sort of threw up over people and wouldn't know when to stop talking. So this is this is the, the essence of a respect contract. Uh, my suggestion for people is take this, take a picture of it, 
turn around, write it in your own words, say it out loud about 15 times, not say it in your head. You have to say it out loud and you're going to have to get more comfortable with it over time. 